we've been talking about stationary points, right, and determining their nature. But you've noticed that stationary points and turning points, they overlap, like, big time. Like, well, turning points are all going to be stationary points, right? But not all stationary points are turning points. So this difference, even though it's subtle, is the one I'm going to focus on to help you understand points of inflection. Okay? So here, talking about points of inflection, the best way to understand a point of inflection and to make sure you don't get confused about it is to think of them like turning points, not like stationary points. You're like, aren't they the same thing? The answer is, well, not quite, right? What is a turning point? Let's actually write this down. Um, you have a picture in your head of what a turning point is. I want to give you words for it now, not just a picture, okay? Because sometimes this is actually instructive for us. A turning point is where the gradient goes from negative to positive, or from positive to negative. Okay, let me say that again. A turning point, that guy or that guy, is where the gradient changes sign from negative, let's go green for gradient, from negative to positive or positive to negative. Okay, a turning point is the point where to the left and to the right, the sign of the gradient has changed. Okay, so a turning point marks a change in the sign of the gradient. Now the reason why this is important is because now that opens up the definition a little broader than the two pictures I just drew. Okay, um, we are used to finding turning points by letting the stationary, like finding stationary points first, and then saying, well, some of your stationary points may or may not be turning points. Okay, <coughs> but you already know a graph. We had a look at it just last week that has a turning point in it that is not a stationary point, okay? It has a turning point because the gradient changes sign, something you're very familiar with. It's this guy, do you remember? <coughs> yeah, here we go. So this function here, right? Admittedly, it's piecemeal, so it kind of breaks the rule a little bit, but that doesn't matter. It's a turning point because there's a change in the sign of the gradient, right? You have a look, you can see, oh, I'm decreasing, then I'm increasing. Now, that point there at the origin is not a stationary point. We've talked about this before. Why is it not a stationary point? It doesn't, it's not differentiable. Yeah, that's right. Like, to be a stationary point, you need the derivative to be zero. I don't even have a derivative at that point, let alone a derivative that's zero, okay? So it's not a stationary point, but it is a turning point when you think about this definition of things. And this is the definition. It, it, well, it turns. You see that? It turns around, okay? Now, points in inflection are just like this, but they're for, like that full concavity rather than gradient. Okay, so let's write this out. A point of inflection, it marks a change in the sign of the concavity. <coughs> now, this is really, really helpful, right? Because now you see, right? If I want to find where points of inflection are, and that's what the next question asks me, find the coordinates of any points of inflection. How do I find these? Well, you would normally think, just like, see how I did it this way, right? I found stationary points by saying, well, f dash will equal zero, okay? And that's fine. But that's not the only way to get a turning point, right? See that? And in exactly the same way, uh, finding where the second derivative is zero, right, just letting that equal zero, that's not the only way to find a point of inflection, okay? So you have to be a little bit careful. You can have discontinuities on the left and right, sorry, discontinuities at a point, and the concavity changes on the left and right. And I'm gonna give you proper examples of that in a second, okay? So now that you have this, you can see, because there has to be a change in the sign, right? Hmm. To find a point of inflection, you're like, woohoo, I have a second derivative now, I'm free of having to use a table of values. I'll never have to use a table of values again. Except you will have to use a table of values because if you need a change in sign, you've got to go before and you've got to go after. There's no use telling me what's happening there, right, at that point. I want the change. I need to go negative positive or positive negative. Okay, yes? But, um, you know when they give you like a funky and then ask you to find what the second Yeah, they just give you a picture. Yeah, yeah. and then like... 
So <laughs> the thing is, right, with that, once you get it, if you get a picture, right, the picture is all you need because the picture will tell you comprehensively, like, is it always in the middle? It's the bottom of the Okay, so uh, not, not quite. Um, you want to have a look, and I literally do it like this. Um, I've run out of my paper again. Oh, well, just, <laughs> here we go. This will, this will just have to do. Did I write this? Nope, doesn't matter. Uh, actually, no, this will be a bit easier. Okay, so for example, you have a look at this. Okay. Now, I, admittedly, this is a rather low tech way of doing it, but it works, okay? If I want to find where is it that the concavity changes, okay? And um, again, I'm thinking about like, is, is the cup up or is the cup down? Okay, so when I have a look, for example, I will cover up some part of the graph, okay? So for example, this part here, that's clearly concave down, isn't it? Clearly, okay? Now you can go past, you can go like to a certain point and you're like, wait a second, it's starting to wiggle back up, right? Like you get to a point, you're like, oh, I've gone too far, right? And then you come back like, ah, oh, no, I've nailed it, okay? Now that's much easier than trying to look at it like that and say, ah, uh, it's there, okay? You, it, you can't see it as easily, whereas when you cover it, you're like, I can see a change very, very dramatically. Okay, so that's what I actually recommend. I mean, you wouldn't use a whole textbook cup, but. Like the bit where it looks like a V. So that would be a point of inflection. Yeah, I mean, like, right there. Like, okay, so I can, I'll, I'll just show you really quickly where all the points of inflection are on this guy, okay? So, um, green is gradient, so I'm going to use red. For I don't have a color that starts with C, so I guess I'll use like. Yeah, it's like. No, I don't have any colors that start with C either. So these are all concave down here. Is that okay? Okay. Um, here you can see this is concave up, up. Up, up, okay, now we're about to, you can see I've got to get to a maximum, and a maximum is concave down, right? So at some point in here it's going to change. I would have to guess that it's somewhere about there, okay? So now you say, oh, okay, concave down, so down, on the, down. On the graph you are guessing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like I don't have, I don't have actual values because I don't have a function for this thing. I, I hope, I'm glad I don't have a function for this thing because it looks like a disaster. Okay, so you can see I am having to approximate, but you'll usually get like a much larger graph. We'll talk about this next lesson actually, and you'll be able to make pretty safe judgments. Okay? And like, if the text will get to a point that's just in the middle of a line, can you assume that they're trying to give you a point? Like, as in they say, "Oh, here you go. Yeah. Tell me what's happening there." Yeah, within within reason. Yes. Like, if it's not a stationary point, it's a good chance that it's a point of inflection. Okay. So you can see now it's like, oh, sorry, wrong one. Um, up. Uh, not for very long, because you can see I'm already approaching another maximum. That's what I'm talking about. That so those are the bits that you mean that spot right yeah. there? What is that? That's a. Oh, that's. that's well, I'll tell you what that is. That's a badly drawn graph, right? <laughs> but but if I had to make a conclusion about it, that looks concave up to me. Uh, here's, here's a very here's a very simple way of thinking about it, right? If I were to get, I didn't bring it with me. If I were to get a um, uh, some water, right, and pour it on here, okay, and pour it all over the whole graph. Okay, where would the water rest? In that hole bit. Okay, now the water is oh. going to it's going to rest in some spots and it's going to roll off in other spots. Okay, so for example, like if I were to put a drop of water right there, just a drop. Okay, where's it going to go? Well, it's clearly going to it's going to roll down this way, right? But is it like how quickly is it going to roll? Is it going to roll faster or is it going to slow down as it rolls? Is it going to increase? So when I look here, I'm like. Ooh. What is going to be there? Okay. So that means it's a minimum, which means it's concave up. But it is changing concavity there. Changing concavity? Yeah, like it's going down and it's going up. That's changing gradient. Going, you, when you said going down and going up, that's a change in gradient. That's not a change in concavity. This whole thing is concave up. There's no change in the sign, in the sign of the concavity. Okay, so it's up, 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 up. That's why I draw arrows to indicate concavity so that I don't confuse it with gradient, which I draw as pluses and minuses. Okay, so little, little pointers.